If you're a subscriber to this channel or a casual viewer, and if you're not a subscriber, you should be, you may or you may not know about my Kickstarter campaign going on, link below by the way, for the Alfred Backpack Hanger. Rugged, durable, utilitarian, totally industrial looking. They come in aluminum, $29, $32 for the stainless steel version, plus shipping. I'm going to give you a sneak peek, behind the scenes look at my Kickstarter campaign. I'm going to show you how I set it up, how I ran it, some of the pitfalls, and where my backers come from. And no, they don't come from YouTube. Yes, this is totally about converting my 26,000 subscribers in YouTube to a few backers on Kickstarter so that I can get my product into production, plain and simple. That's what this video is about. Let's start with the basics. What is Kickstarter? Well, Kickstarter is an online platform where people, in theory, makers like me, can get their product funded by backers. So small donations equal large volumes so you can get your product into production. Yeah, the system totally gets abused. Companies like Lego have even had, of course, successful Kickstarter campaigns. But in my opinion, Kickstarter is really for smaller makers, designers like myself to get their products into production and their dreams fulfilled. Kickstarter is an all or nothing platform. If you reach your goal, in my case, $5,000, you get funded, you get your money, you can go into production. This is what my Kickstarter campaign page looks like. Product at the top, a little video, you can click on it. On the right hand side shows all the backing levels. So if you want to get a product, you can pledge to become a backer. If I reach my goal, 5,000 bucks, not that huge, goes into production, ship the products. In theory, that's what's supposed to happen. The Alfred backpack hanger holds your backpack, can hold your mobile devices, can charge them up at the same time. You can hang your keys at the bottom. Simple utilitarian, like I said, very functional, industrial looking, can pretty much go anywhere. That's my product. The first thing I did when I was going to do a Kickstarter campaign was to get organized. So I created a document that had all the information in it that I needed. So in this case, links about the product, information about the product, what it was going to be about, stuff that I was going to post in the Kickstarter campaign to let people know what the product is about. Beyond that, this document holds a ton of other information, marketing information, who I want to contact, how I want to publicize this product, even research about the shipping bags that we're going to use to ship them out to the backers in the end, boxes, all the little details contained in one document, easily accessible, and I can share it out on Google Docs. Works really good. Once I had a prototype made by the manufacturer down in Miami, I made a little commercial because I can do that. I have a YouTube channel. I need that commercial to run the Kickstarter campaign. Once I launched, it gives you access to information. So here we are on the dashboard and it shows us basically how much money we've raised every single day to get to the point we're at. The goal is 5,000 bucks. It's a little closer to 4,000 right now. I'm getting close. This shows you, for example, where your referrals come from. So where people are clicking from before they come to Kickstarter to make a donation. This way I can track where the backers come from. Some of the marking that I did beyond my own was on Instagram. I thought I'd give that a try. Crowdfund success cost me $25. They make a little post on their Instagram page. I get, or they get 585 views and two comments. Totally got me zero followers, by the way, on Instagram. Complete waste of money. Instagram kind of sucks for social marketing because there's no linking. It's terrible. Anyway, lesson learned. 25 bucks wasted. Got nothing out of it. No backers. All right. So then I tried Crystal Wolf. 
Facebook Marketing Queen, a one-week campaign for 99 bucks, 45,000 subs on Twitter. Those are her posts. Totally uncreative. Posted the same thing every single day. Didn't reply to my emails. No, nothing changed because I can see the analytics where the backers come from. This is what she sends me. Look at the top. It says Strebel. She didn't even address me to my name. Anyway, I did have some success because Core 77 put me in the trending page two weeks ago for Kickstarter campaigns. That was very successful. I probably got three or four backers on that day. Super grateful. Thank you, Core 77. You know who you are. Your first name begins with an R. Your last name begins with an N. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. I can't thank you enough for your help. Let's take a look at some of the basic analytics. This shows me where the clicks come from for the backers that I have. You can see that a lot of them are external, and that also comes from a newsletter that I have that has about a 1,000 people on it. And so that drove some backers as well. This is what a typical backer looks like and the information that I can see. I can see their name, their pledge amount, and their location in the world. So in this case, this is somebody from the United States and what they pledged. Let's talk about who my backers actually are. So the majority of them are serial backers uh, and friends and family. So maybe 50-50, somewhere in there, maybe even more serial backers than friends and family. So, And you would think uh, with 26,000 subs on YouTube, you'd have a few more backers from YouTube. But no, most of them are serial backers, meaning they've backed dozens in this case 52 this guy has so thank you to the serial backers the wild card in this is the 179 and it's well over that at this point of people that are following the project and it does show those converted and it's only about five percent so that means there's 180 probably 200 people that are following this project that haven't pledged anything and that's a huge wild card it's only going to take a few to convert uh to make this a successful campaign and then this shows me the reward popularity which are the most popular rewards all right so currently i have mm, thousand bucks left to go probably only take about 20 backers to get that average pledge is like 50 60 dollars so 20 30 backers i mean i would love to crush it and do like ten thousand bucks and produce a whole bunch of them that'd be fantastic that's my goal also, a couple more things of note. If you think that Kickstarter is going to help you in any way, shape, or form during your campaign, hmm, you are sadly mistaken. Kickstarter doesn't give a shit about you. They really only care about their money that they pocket after the campaign is successful. By the way, I think they take about 5% or something like that. So even if I just barely reach my goal, they're going to take a chunk out of that. I never got featured on the landing page of Kickstarter, never gotten any support from them in any way, shape, or form. And I hear this from other Kickstarter people as well. They really are only gonna promote projects that are super successful and that meet their certain analytic standards. Of course, they're gonna promote the things that are most successful. So that's a sneak peek at my Kickstarter campaign. I realize that's a little bit of an unusual video for me, but there'll be more great content in the future. I hope that you become a backer and help me get the Backpack Hanger into production. The link to the Kickstarter campaign is below. Thank you for your support.